Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and today I'm going to be looking at the Dart Zone Max Omnia Pro Gen 2. I'll be taking a look at what was actually in the box, what the box claimed, I will be first looking at what it is. I will then go into what it was, I will talk about the Gen 1 and the improvements that they made, and I will briefly at the end talk about, um, I guess we'll say expectations. But first we're going to see what was in the box. Or rather, what's, what's left of the box, I had already tore it down for recycling. Luckily, the parts with the bits I need are more or less intact. So I want to take a look at what the box claimed. What, did, what performance did it promise? What did, what, what did it say was going to be in there? And really, other than just telling us what was in the box, they claimed three modes of fire, which it definitely has, and they claim 150 foot range, which when I tested at long range, it came and I came in at at least 180. So it definitely has the range that it claims. But that's it. It doesn't make any FPS claims. It doesn't make any accuracy claims. Um, it simply makes that range claim and, and says that it has three modes of fire. So it definitely has all of that. In the box, we got the blaster itself, of course, the Omnia Pro, which has its sights. It has a stock, which has both, it is a uh, standard end strike style attachment, but it is also a standard buffer tube. So you can replace this part with a, uh, any stock that goes in a buffer tube, and you can put any end strike stock on there. This stock actually does lock quite nicely. I like that. Um, and it does have a spot for a sling mount there. You could also hook something down here. It doesn't have any dedicated, or what I'd really think of as dedicated sling mounts. There is a potential up here as well. Um, it then also came with two 15 round magazines and 30 darts, so you can load both magazines full. iPro, I love that that is now standard in any of these higher FPS blasters. Um, a battery, which is a 2S IMR. So this is uh, two 18650s that have been stuck together and then have um, an XD30 connector. So you can hypothetically use any 2S LiPo in this. Do not put a 3S in, you will smoke the board. Um, but any 2S, annoyingly, I didn't have any 2S LiPos that had XD30 connectors. All of mine have XD60 connectors. I've got one ordered. And it does have a balanced charger. So you can hypothetically charge this on your LiPo charger, but you don't need to because it does come with a USB charger, which might be a little bit slower, but is probably ultimately better for the battery because this isn't actually a LiPo, so you probably shouldn't charge it on a LiPo charger. I would recommend using theirs. Um, theirs does seem to work quite nicely. So that's what's in the box. Let's uh, let's get it fully assembled and uh, get you some fips, and then we'll uh, then we'll do some plinking. Right here we are at the chronograph. We'll do our fips at semi-auto, and then we'll do a couple of uh, bursts and a couple and a, a mag of full auto just to take a look at the uh, rate of fire and the trigger response because that's something we'll be discussing later. So let's get some fips. One forty-five. One twenty-seven. 150, 151, 161, 154. So yeah, it sits right there at 150, 160 range. There was one lower one, might have been a bad dart. These aren't fresh darts. Let's check out that burst. One more. Still coming in at, this one got 149, 149, 149 on the last one, so we're still still coming in there. Let's see full auto and we'll see if we see a lot of dip in uh, as we're burst, or firing full auto. None whatsoever. It was all still in that 140, 150, 160, couple of duplicates. Um, full auto, it's, it's got a good rate of full auto. Burst is a little slow for my taste. I prefer my burst to be really snappy. Just because it's burst, that's kind of the whole point. It should fire three darts in the time it normally takes you to fire one, so you don't have to aim as much. Um, again, we'll talk about that later. Now, let's go see if I can hit anything at all with this one. Right, we're here at my indoor range, because as you can probably tell, it's pouring rain. And we're going to see if I can hit anything at all. I have one of those electronic targets set up. We'll see if I can hit them. I'm not at a very far range, so I really should be able to, but I am not a marksman, so let's see what happens. Oh! 
I got three out of the four. Let's try some burst. See what happens. Oh! Nailed it! Well, I managed to get them all. Let's uh, spray and pray. Oh! I got three of the four on full auto. That's actually, that's actually pretty good. I am, uh, I am pleased with that. Everything went into the dart net, so that's definitely an improvement. Let's, uh, let's talk about some more stuff. Ergonomics and controls, I think. Ergonomics and controls, and then we'll do, we'll, do, we'll, we'll talk about the comparisons. Right, so, once again, the performance is what it says on the box, because the box really doesn't make any claims about the performance. Let's talk about the controls and the ergonomics. So I absolutely love the form factor of this blaster. It's one of my favorite things about it, uh, because it is basically... Well, it's an FDL-3, is what it looks like. And while I love that because the FDL-3 is a fabulous form factor, I think that is one of the causes of some of the discontent. But we'll get to that at the end. Um, it's got Picatinny rail at the top. I like that. I would have preferred this be straight and have Picatinny rail so you could add four grips or I could mount stuff there because that's what I like. Um, it wouldn't be difficult to create something that, you know, adds Picatinny rail down here. But... Um, love the knuckle duster grip. I personally really like those, um, but that's again personal preference. Obviously the stock attachment, good move there. Um, it's half dart only. I, I appreciate that. The max line is pretty much, I think the max line is now all half dart only. Uh, the max line includes things like the outlaw, the tomcat, the striker, the dictator. I think it's the dictator. Yeah. Um, it's a really good line. It's their, their 150. It's their super stock line, as opposed to just the dart zone line, which is things like the, the Thunder Strike or Thunderbolt and the, um, oh, what are the, the Matrix Fire, the, the Spectrum, uh, those which tend to be 100 FPS and below. And then, of course, you've got the Pro line, which is a whole nother thing. Um, and so, yeah, the performance for that, half darts like that, um, Magazines. Let's talk about magazines real quick. If I can grab all the different magazines I've got lying around the table here. Um, it has their new half talon, half katana mags where the form factor, the shape is talon, but the, the catch mechanism is katana. Um, but they have the catch in both locations, or they have dual catches. So it will take theirs, obviously, but it will also take katana style, they're older ones, anything that's a katana style, including an actual katana, and it will take standard Talon Max, even though it's got the catch in a different location because that's just how it is. What it won't take is Nerf Pro Mags. The mags from the Stripe X will not. They will fit, but they will not go far enough in to catch because this lip on the Strife mag is just a little bit lower, and so it doesn't actually get far enough in. Now, you could obviously just file or dremel that off real easily, but that's the only of the standard half dart mags that it won't take. And again, love the fact that they're including that dual catch and the geometry that will allow all the different ones. Just a solid, solid move on dart zones. Um, dart zones behalf there. Um, the selector switch is one thing I have a slight gripe with one it's not particularly it's actually honestly i find it more lefty friendly than righty friendly because with right it you can get your finger up there but you have to curl your grip around or you gotta have really long thumbs uh, whereas with my left hand i can actually more easily get it to the various positions so yeah i don't know how difficult it would have been to put one on either side but they they didn't and i i understand the other thing i really don't like but again i understand why they had to do it is that the fully forward position is off, but it will still rev. And again, mechanically, I understand why they did that. It would have been much more difficult to make it so that that also turned off rev. Um, and I know why they had to have that. Anything that has this FPS or, or you know anything with this high of an FPS is probably required by law to have a safety, and that acts as a safety. So it won't fire in that position, even though it will rev. 
The problem I have with that is if you go to flip to semi-auto really quickly, you tend to go all the way forward and it will rev, but it won't fire. And that's somewhat disconcerting. But that would be something really easy for us to mod. You could just glue a little piece of plastic there so it can't go all the way forward. Print a replacement uh, for this tab that is wider so it can't go all the way forward. There's lots of ways you could do it. Um, I understand why they had to have it and why they went with that option as opposed to a you know an actual mechanical safety that prevents you from pulling the trigger or disengages the rev or something. But that was a fairly simple solution. And again, an easy thing for us to fix to something I would prefer. Um, let's talk about the improvements. It's night and day for the most part. Uh, this thing is actually usable. I was able to hit the targets while actually aiming at them. The Gen 1, <laughs> in addition to having a much more significant delay on the trigger, was so inaccurate that I would have had to have aimed a foot up and to the left to hit that target that I was aiming at earlier. Uh, this, this blaster hit a foot to the right and down when you were aiming dead center. And while it was very consistent, you, you don't want that. You don't want to have to aim a foot up and to the left to hit the target in front of you. You want to aim at the target in front of you. Um, and, and I understand. I don't know if that was a flywheel alignment issue or what it was. Probably something easy enough to fix. I haven't bothered to open it up and take a look. I do plan to. I want to tinker with it. I really want to. Well, I want someone to make a brushless kit for it so bad. Um, this one I can actually hit. It's not the most accurate thing in the world, but it is a flywheeler and it isn't a pro blaster which is the other thing I will get into. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the trigger delay. There is still some trigger delay, and also the trigger is slightly different. It looks the same. I'm gonna take the battery out of this so it doesn't make noise while I demonstrate this. The triggers look exactly the same, but we'll see if I can see this. This one had a much longer pull. This one has a much shorter pull and is also heavier. And I like that shorter, heavier pull. It's, it, it just feels better in my opinion. This one feels a little sloppy. So I like that improvement. So the way they improved the rate of, or the trigger response, it didn't change the rate of fire. It just changed how long it takes from when you pull the trigger to when the dart actually comes out. In the original one, and I really don't know if, how well this is gonna show up on camera, probably atrociously. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's gonna show well at all, but the way the pusher in this blaster works is it's a wheel that has a tab sticking out of it. And that tab, when it comes around, picks up the dart and pushes it forward into the, into the flywheels. And on the, the Gen 1, at its resting position, because this does have pusher control, obviously, the pusher always stops at the same place so that everything is reliable and all of that, it stopped with that tab pushing straight forward, which meant it had to do a full rotation before it came all the way around and would pick up the dart. And so that's where that delay was coming from and the time it took the wheel to do that rotation and push it in. Um, also, for some reason, semi-auto has a much, that, that wheel spins slower in semi-auto than it does in burst, which is slower than in full auto. And I have no idea why they would do that. I cannot think of a single practical reason to have the rate of fire on those be slower because all it does is reduce response time, trigger response time. And that is, there's, there's, I can't think of a practical purpose for that. And I really don't understand why they made burst slower than full auto, when in my opinion, burst should be faster than full auto. But they did. Now, the way they improved the response time so that delay is less, is they changed where the wheel stops. Instead of stopping straight forward, it's stopping most of the way through a full rotation. It's not quite all the way back, which would be ideal, but it's definitely much further around. And so it has less distance to travel before it picks up the dart. Other than that, everything is the same. They just changed where that was, which I haven't, like I said, I haven't opened it up and I haven't figured out how that is being controlled. What is telling the wheel to stop and where? Because I would think the easiest way to increase the rate of fire would be to simply add a second tab going out the back, opposite of the original one. So it would immediately pick a dart up and push it. The question is, what actually stops the wheel? Because if you can't stop it after a half a rotation instead of stopping it after a full rotation, semi-auto would become a two round burst, burst would become a six round burst, and full auto would still be full auto, but would be twice as fast. So I'm really curious to see if I can make it so that that second tab just cuts the rate of fire for everything. 
That I think would be the easiest, but it, you would need to still have the, the mechanism that stops the wheel where it needs to stop. Um, alternatively, you just go with the two round. <laughs> I don't mind a two round burst, that'd be fun. Anyway, um, major, major improvements. It's definitely, it's usable now. Um, it's still obviously not going to replace anything in my current arsenal. I'm not going to be replacing my, my F2L3 or, or, you know, anything like that. But this is a solid, solid intro blaster for somebody new to the hobby who wants something that has the versatility of select fire, that's got decent performance. Um, this is a solid starter blaster, and that's what the Max line is. The Max line isn't a pro line. It's meant to be the, the middle ground, the, the super stock round. Uh, the sort of the super stock line. Um, it's things you can use at public Nerf Wars, but might not be something that you'd want to use in a pro tournament. Um, that's what the pro line is for. That's why we have the Mark IV and the Mark III and all of those. Those are, are meant or are designed to be uh, advertised as pro blasters. This isn't, which is weird. I know it's got pro in the name. You're like, well, then why is it the Omnia Pro? I don't know. But it is part of the Max line. So. That was where I think a lot of the um, expectations, unfair, unreasonable expectations that led to self-induced um, disappointment because it looks like an FDL-3. It's got pro in the name. Everyone was, was hoping, desperately hoping, that this was going to be a $90 FDL-3. And then it wasn't. And our, admittedly, the first release was a very much a disappointment, but they acknowledged that and they have corrected that. But this was never meant to be a $90 FDL-3, and it was completely unreasonable for us to expect a $90 FDL-3. And I was one of the same, the people who, who thought that too. I got caught up in the hype of the Omnia Pro, and oh, it's going to be select fire, and it's going to, you know. And because Dart Zone has absolutely hit it out of the park so much lately with their Pro line, I thought that's what this was going to be. It didn't, I didn't look close enough, I wasn't paying close enough attention to realize that this was Max line and not Pro line. I would love for them to come out with a pro equivalent, um, something that is a little bit more like an FDL-3. Um, now that's gonna cost more, you know, you're, you're at least looking at probably $150, if not more, to get a pro level select fire blaster. For 90 bucks, you will get a Nerf War level blaster. And for that, it's fabulous. 90 bucks is an excellent price for what you get with this blaster, in my opinion. Some people might disagree. They might think that, you know, it, it should have had better response, it should have had this, it should have had that, and perhaps, but those things almost certainly would have cost more. The fact that this includes your battery and your charger, iPro, multiple mags, you know, it's it's got a lot of nice things for the, for the, for the $90. And right now, I think you can still get it on sale for 60 so, though, be careful, that might still be Gen 1, question mark. Um, but I think it's a good blaster. I'm impressed. Once I reset my expectations to look at it as a max blaster and not a pro blaster, I feel that it is very much an acceptable blaster for that price. And I will definitely be keeping it for loaner purposes here in the shop. So there are my thoughts on the Omnia Pro. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it was better than it should have been? Not as good? Were you crushed by the first release and just won't touch the second one? Are you hoping that there'll be a pro version of, you know, a better, you know, a Mark V perhaps or a Mark... 3.5? Let me know what you guys think. Um, and thank you guys for watching. And thank you, Dart Zone, for taking responsibility and sending a, another one. That was actually very big of you. I, I'm impressed by that. And I, I appreciate what you guys are doing for the hobby. So, thank you for watching. Ah!